Visit IowaCups.com. You can't make it to the game. You can catch each game. Hey, remind me. Morning, everybody. Morning, everybody. We got Iowa Cup tickets to give away. KRNT Des Moines is 1021 FM and 1350 yep. ESPN. Des Moines Sports Leader. And Des Moines Radio Group Station. The following show on 1021 FM and 1350 ESPN Des Moines is pulled by Outdoor Tradition TV LLC. All right, welcome to this week's edition of the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. Hope everyone's having a great Saturday morning all across the good old U.S. of A. The show is brought to you today in part by our good friends out at Three Rivers Boat and RV Storage in Carlisle. You get a 12 by 50 assigned spot, $60 a month, one month free when you pay for a year. Secure gauge 24-7, security cameras. Just give Tracy, Dick, or Danielle a call at 515-822-822. 1362 and fill out an application, and they, uh, you'll be on your way to having a place to keep your goodies there. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Scott. Good morning to all the kids up and running around in the woods this morning. It's youth season in Iowa. Turkey, turkey, turkey. Go get them, kids. Not, not, not a terribly bad morning this morning. Uh, it's supposed to be real windy today. I don't think it is, but I don't know. I was out putting turkey blinds last night, and Good morning, Chris. Oh, Philip Vanderpool's birthday today. Chris DeMont said happy birthday to Philip Vanderpool. Jeez, Chris, how old can dirt get? Let's see. He's got to be pushing 80. That old, that old, uh, that old stale biscuit. Happy birthday, Philip. Philip got a young man. Uh, I think it was a young boy yesterday. Got a, got him a turkey in Kansas. So, uh. Congratulations to Philip. He's always good about getting them kids out there. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Stephen. Thank you. You guys, too. Appreciate that. I hope everyone's doing well today. All right. We've got a lot to get to in the next uh, two hours. Larry McCoy will be on next hour. we got to talk about uh, Gearhead's Open House today. There's a big shoot down in Missouri for MoVets Outdoors. Uh, the youth uh, season starts. Our season starts Monday. we got a lot to do. Old, old, very old. He is old, very old. <laughs> Chris, old P. Let's head over to the phones and uh, let's uh, go talk with our biologist buddy, Mr. Jim Coffee. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Dan. Not a, not a bad morning this morning for the kids. I thought it was supposed to be super windy today. It's, it's not real windy out there. No, I think they're going to have a good, uh, good morning. It's going to change here later this afternoon. But oh, is it going to pick up? Yeah, it's going to get a little windy. Well, I'd rather it be windy in the afternoon than in the morning, buddy. At least you can hear this morning. Yeah, I mean, it always makes for a nice morning when it's calm outside like this and, yeah. and turkeys are gobbling. Yeah. Where are you at? Are you out running around or are you still at home base? I'm at home right now. Yep. I was going to go down and listen to some uh, prairie chickens this morning, but going to get some other things done here around the house first. Mama said, you got, George, you got honeydews to do. Well, turkey season's coming up, so I got to get my things done. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We're gonna be out. Hey, what time? What time do I need to be out in the? Uh, what time do I need to be out in the woods uh, on Monday? Do I need to be in the blind by five thirty? What are you thinking? Well, it just depends on what you enjoy on your turkey hunt. You know, we tend to think of spring turkey hunting. A lot of people like to watch the the sun come up, and I would say the night shift go to bed and the morning shift come awake, and so that's just a wonderful time to be. But you don't have to be an early morning turkey hunter. Tur- turkeys are in the woods all day long, and, uh, you know, they tend to gobble right off the roost, and we like that, but they'll still continue to gobble and move around throughout the day. Yeah, good morning. So it's your schedule. Yeah, good, uh, good morning, Pete. Well, I went out and got mine set up yesterday, so I will uh, I think we're, I, I, I'm hoping we, we uh, I could, we need the rain, but then part of me doesn't want to have the rain tomorrow, but, uh. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna probably get up. I'll probably have to get up at three, three fifteen on Monday, and uh, I probably should be in the blind by five thirty if I want to hunt them off the roost. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially when you have these really bluebird type days anymore. Um, as the turkeys start working up, you know, they'll be gobbling even at five o'clock sometimes. So. Yeah. But but by five thirty usually is a pretty good indicator. You need to be where you where you 
want to be at. As that wood starts to lighten up, those birds can see through the woods. And, and you know, we're going to bump into some, some deer and some raccoons and some other things as we're walking in. And, and uh, if you get into your spot early, that gives the woods a time to kind of relax and calm back down. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've been on my on my tactic cam reveals. I've been getting, uh, I've getting one or two times with a bunch of hens. They're still kind of packed up a little bit. Um, you know, just as a biologist, uh, I mean, what should we be really trying to do? You know, Philip and everybody always says they want to be the sexiest hen. And, the, you know, the first thing that that, Turk, that Tom hears is them. And I, I, I don't know. I kind of like the way for them to, to get down because I think most of the time before they fly down, they kind of already have their mind up which way they're going. But uh, what do you what do you suggest? Yeah, it just kind of depends on, on your setup and where you're at. You know, sometimes you can be too far away. Sometimes you can be too close to the turkeys. If, if I'm in a position where, you know, the birds obviously know where I'm at, I'll give them a few little tree yelps in the morning and then I, I get quiet. So they know where I'm at. Like you said, kind of help them make a decision which way to fly down. But they kind of know where they want to go, and, and typically if we've done our scouting, we kind of know where they want to go. And, you know, the, the best way to shoot a turkey is to be where, between where he is and where he wants to go. Uh, I was just going to get to uh, just I, I put I put it where, where they're at and where, they're, where they should be going, so I should be good. Yeah. Good morning, Shane. Good morning, Shane. Hey, what is this eclipse going to do to our hunt on Monday? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting hunt, actually. I mean, it's going to be kind of fun to be out there when it happens. We're not in a full eclipse here in Iowa, most of Iowa anyway. And, and uh, you're not going to see a lot of change. It's a short it's a short period, just a few minutes. But, you know, it's a fun time to observe what's going on. And we're probably going to see a lot of the birds get really quiet. Yeah. You know, it's going to be disturbing to them. They're just going to be, what's going on? Because it's supposed to be daytime. But it's not going to really change their behavior that much. So they're not going to head back to the roost, huh? No, no, they're just going to hang out, but they're probably going to hunker down. And, and if it was your turkey hunt, I would actually expect them to kind of just squat where they're at and just kind of stay still for a little while because they're just kind of confused. You're going to see the little songbirds fly up in the trees and, and just really kind of fluff their feathers and just get really quiet. You know, if they're out there singing like you'd expect them to, they're just going to get quiet for a few minutes. Yeah. You know, uh, we're not supposed to look directly at the sun during an eclipse. It could hurt your eyes, right? You get... Uh, Absolutely. You, what, yeah. How does that affect the animals? Same way, you know. You're talking about burning. You're burning the uh, the cones and the rods and the eye, the nerves of the eyes. So you know, you never want to look at the sun. And and well, basically, biologically, we're taught not to. Your eyes are going to avert from it because it's going to hurt. Right. So they just don't look up. No. No. Yeah. There you go. I don't know, man. It's going to be an interesting day. I don't know if I've ever turkey hunted during an eclipse. That's it's going to it's going to be an interesting story anyway. Exactly, and that's the, that's the beauty of turkey is adding to those stories. Is if you're out there when it's happening, and you know, and take the time to observe it and just enjoy it. It's it's just another story, and you know, another another arrow in the quill. Um, it's just it's something fun to see what's going on. Yeah, Bob, tell him I tell him I said uh, congratulations and God bless. Uh, let's see. Uh, he said Dan Dan Dancy Dan Coy. Has orders to be deployed in five days. Good luck on your season. You guys too, Bob. We are in the 95% total eclipse area, so we might get some cool trail camp picks, Scott says in Oklahoma. Again, just take advantage of, of, of what's going to happen. You know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event, and it, it'll create some good stories. And it, 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 Nothing might happen at all, or you might see something really cool happen. Yeah. You know, when I was real little, Haley's Comet came through. And I don't know if I'll live to see it come back again. Isn't that like every 80 years or something? I think it is. 80, 82, something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that's crazy. That'd be neat to see it again. Yeah, I remember in school, we all went outside and, and made our little photo, what, the little photo box. That yeah. You look at the eclipse with. Yeah, you had to look through a shoe box, remember? Yep. Yeah, I'm I telling you, you know, the good old days, man, when we actually did stuff in school. When we didn't have glasses. Yeah, we didn't have. There you go. So Andrew's a school teacher, so I kind of get. I just got on him. I said, "What is with these kids today? With your generation, man?" I saw something on YouTube. Somebody didn't want to apply. Half it was too stressful to apply for a job. She thought she should just get a be given a job. It's like, grow up. Come on. It all, Jim. I'm telling you, it all started with the participation trophy. It all went down south from there, man. 
it all started when we got old. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pete, the Donut Man Ariadne says Bigfoot's going to come out during the eclipse. I hope so. I'm still waiting to see him. I keep yeah, asking Jim if DNR is stocking any. He, he just won't give me a definitive answer. So, You know, I, I got to tell you, buddy, uh, the kids are out this weekend. What is some of the stuff we need to do uh, from the DNR perspective uh, to be good stewards out there this weekend? Yeah, great point, Dan. That's It's it's a great time to have the kids out. You know, it's a little bit cold, but we do have to teach them some of that resilience. Is that turkey hunting is not an easy sport. There's a lot of failure. And, and I taught my kids that you learn through failure. If you're yeah. going to go out, you're going to participate. And as an adult, you know, this, this season was really created to give kids that mentor relationship, to take the pressure off, to not have too many hunters in the woods so they get a, a chance to go out and, and really see the best of the best of turkey hunting. And what I advise people generally is that, remember, kids have fairly short attention spans, so you're not going to be out there being fully active turkey hunting. There's going to be a lot of downtime, but use that downtime to, to relate with that child and, and relate the woods to that child and to talk about things like blue jays and the squirrels and the interactions between one wildlife and the other wildlife and, and get them engaged. And that's what's going to create a lifelong hunter is that they're going to want to go out and see those those experiences. Yeah. It's not about harvesting the bird. It's about the, the experience of being out in the woods. Yeah, if you get to tag out, that's just the great the biscuit on the gray or the gravy on the biscuit. The gravy on the biscuit, that's right. Yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go. And you know, I, I still tell the story a lot when I give seminars and things about my daughter and the first time I took her out and she's sitting there and, and it was cold and I said, you know, turn towards the sun and or turn towards the east and when the sun comes up, just wait, you know, eight and a half minutes. And she's like, what? And we sat there and sat there, and, and, you know, she's watching her watch in eight and a half minutes or so, and all of a sudden she feels those first warm, warm sun rays hit her body. And she's like, Dad, this is awesome. Right? <laughs> it happens every day. Yeah, those are called thermals, sweetheart. Yeah, <laughs> but nobody's experiencing it. Yeah, you know, no. You experience it. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. I, you know, in my age, it's all, I learn something new every day, so, because, you know, I forget. Yeah, and so and, and it's our job as mentoring adults or mentoring um, uh, hunters to, to teach those things to those kids, you know, and talk about the wind and talk about the weather and just the little things that, that make every day special. Um, and, you know, while we're out there, we're, we're turkey hunting, too. Oh, so. I got gotcha. you. All right, Bob, I get it now. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, he had to, uh, yeah, okay, I get you, I get you. Yeah, oh, all right. David said good morning, Jim. Uh, yeah, she she will remember that hunt because daddy was with her. There you go, Aaron. That's a good one. Uh, just talked to a guy who was taking his three year old son out right now. Is he? Is he? How is that legal, Shane? Shane wants to know. Yeah, so so we made a decision several years ago um, that it, it really is a parent child relationship. You know, it's up to the parent to decide when their child is able to go hunting and enjoy that experience. Now. You know, should a three-year-old be shooting a gun? Well, is that up to the DNR? Is that up to the parent? And, and obviously that kid does not have the, the experience to know. That's why that mentored relationship has to be there of when to shoot and how to shoot. And I always put it in perspective of, of just like driving a car. When a kid hits 14, we don't say go drive a car. They get a learner's permit. And we go out with them and we tell them when to apply the brake and when to put on their turning signal. And, you know, we're, we're teaching them the right way to do something. So they can be safe and, and enjoy it. And, and that's what we've looked at with the DNR is exactly that same thing. is when a parent thinks their child is able to hunt, as long as they're out there mentoring with them, it's okay to do it. Hmm. Man, I tell you what, I don't know. Can, can a three-year-old shoot a gun, Jim? That's up to the parent. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, well, I guess, I, I guess a 410 they could. So the, the biggest issue that I have, Dan, and not to get too philosophical, is, is that is that the right time for a child to shoot? Yeah. You know, when did we all get our first gun? And it wasn't because we were physically able to hold our BB gun and, and shoot at <laughs> a target or shoot at whatever it was we were shooting at. It's when could we have the mental capacity to understand what we were doing. Yeah. You know, when you shoot that gun, you're taking a life. And yeah. you have to understand the consequences of why you're doing that and how you're doing that. And it's not a video game. It's right. a real life experience. So that's up to the parent to understand when their child is able to, to comprehend that. Yeah. 
Good morning, Steve, up in New York. Thanks for watching, buddy. Always appreciate you. David, thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. Richard, Richard, good morning, Richard. Uh, unless they're a farm kid, Aaron says. Yeah, I, I'm not going to even, that's not up to me. I'm not going to. I'm not going to, I got enough problems parenting my own kids. I, uh, I, you know, I'll just leave that, uh, uh, up to them. Like you eloquently said, Jim, uh, anything else we need to know? I told you I was going to just keep you a short time today. Cause I know you're busy, but, uh, w just make sure you report your harvest. Yeah. From, from the standpoint of the DNR, you are required to report your harvest. Um, and, and that just helps us again, gauge the, the activity that's out there, the number of birds that have been harvested, what County, what part of the state, um, and, and that's just a requirement of being a good conservationist hunter. You're helping us collect data that helps us manage that resource so we can continue to do it into the future. Yeah. You know, we're, we're always going to emphasize safety is don't get so worked up on, on, on the harvest. You know, you have to know what's downrange. You have to know if it's a good shot. We all want to get a, a good ethical kill when we do do it. Um, nobody likes to cripple a bird, that's for sure. You know, I can tell you the couple times I've missed and crippled birds, it still bothers me today. Yeah. Um, but we just really want people to be out there and enjoy it. It's a short time of the year. It's a fun time of the year to be outside. And we certainly don't want anything bad to happen. Um, so just enjoy every minute that you're out there. And, and if you don't shoot a turkey, it's still a successful day. Yeah. Hey, and just to circle back real quick, too, if you're going to be taking out a child for the youth hunt, the youth is the one that's actually supposed to be doing the shooting, not the parent. So, if you are, Absolutely. yeah, if yeah. you are taking somebody out there that's three or four or five years old, I would make sure that you're going to be able to demonstrate that if that's ever called into question. Because, um, you know, I tell you, the biggest thing that gets people caught or in trouble, Jim, is posting stuff on social media. Because the the people there's there's folks looking at that all the time. I. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then the other thing you got to be careful of, too, is remember, the experience is for the child. It's, right. It's not about the success of pulling that trigger. You get the dad that's a, that's a little overzealous and says, oh, you know, he can't hold the gun up. i got to get this bird for him for his first bird. No, it's about him. And if he doesn't shoot, it's still he's still out there with you. He's still spending it, time learning. It was, that's the most important part. It was still a successful hunt, even if you don't shoot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't get hung up on shooting a bird. Get get hung up on getting that child interested in the outdoors. Yep. Making a lifelong sport of it. Well, and the way I've always said it, you know, with my kids and everything else, you want to teach them what, you know, do it the right way so they can carry that on throughout their life. And, you know, we want to, we want to, we want to teach good stewardship with the conservation and follow the rules. Absolutely. Because the things that you teach them are what they're going to remember the rest of their life. Yeah, that's exactly right. Jim, always a pleasure, buddy, and thank you for thank you so much for always helping on the show. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for that. Well, I appreciate it too, Dan. It's an exciting time of the year, and I just wish everybody the best of luck. Yeah, keep a good thought for me on Monday. Well, y'all need all the help I can get. I'll be watching the reports to see if you if you send your report in. Oh, uh, well, I'll send it in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I appreciate you. Have a great day. You too, buddy. There he goes, Jim Coffey, everybody. Iowa DNR turkey biologist. And you want to teach them respect for your fellow hunter. That's right. A successful hunt does not require a gut pile. That is exactly right, Scotty. Ah, oh, seven, uh, 718 and some change. Um, I was out yesterday, and, uh, you know, as I, I don't know if you all know this or not, but when I'm out, when, when I got windshield time going, that's where I, I call my, a lot of my partners and uh, just check in, see how things are going. And uh, I try to touch base with all my uh, partners as much as I can, at least, you know, try every every month or every couple months. And, uh, you know, everybody's busy, and but, you know, it's always important to stay in touch with uh, who you're working with and see what's going on. And uh, I, I had a chance to pick up the phone yesterday, and I was calling my buddy Donnie Herman at Herman's Fine Jewelers and uh his uh, daughter answered the phone and, and, uh, I heard something I, I just ne was not prepared to hear. And I wasn't, uh, I, uh, I was not, I never thought I was going to hear that. But, uh, yesterday I told everybody, I really would appreciate it if you would keep your thoughts and prayers with the Herman's family. Uh, uh, they really need your help right now. Uh, it, when you talk to God or the man upstairs or whenever you're thinking about, uh, good th you know good thoughts and stuff please uh send them out towards herman's fine jewelers and the family uh they uh they're going through a really bad time right now i i don't want to really get into everything right now but um 
you know, Donnie needs your prayers. And uh, I love Don. I love Don Herman. Don Herman has been with me for almost 20 years. And uh, Don and Frank and all the, the all the gang there at Herman's are just some of the sweetest, nicest people you'd ever want to meet in your life. And for a jewelry store to think out of the box enough to support an outdoor show, a hunting and fishing show, I'll always be grateful for them because it's been a great relationship. It's, they get people in. People are always so nice to you, the list, you guys, the listeners, when you go in there. You've been always nice over the years. They appreciate you. Um, it's just been a great partnership, and people, were, you know, they thank them for supporting a show that talks about hunting and fishing. And uh, I, I just, uh, I am so, my heart is just so sick right now. I, uh, I don't know what else to say. I, um, I, it's not so much as a commercial, but instead of a, in lieu of a commercial today or a live spot, I'm going to ask you to humbly uh, just pray for the Herman family. And uh, if you go in there, tell them you're thinking of them and that you love them, you appreciate them. And uh, I, I just uh, I just don't know why that happens to good people. I, I just don't understand it. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I will always, always, always be very grateful for Herman's, Donnie and Frank and the whole Herman family. And uh, I love them and God bless them. So, uh, thank you. I'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. Morning, Anita Joe. These are very important to your area. Thank you, Patrick. And for consistent grouping. Flex Morning, Flex Stewie. Flex fine lineup of products has been helping archers steer their arrows for over 50 years. Silent Night veins are 30% thinner with a much greater taper than veins out there. This contributes to a dramatic reduction of in-flight drag. Flex Fletch veins also have the capability of reshaping or bounce back after pass-through shots on targets or game. This ensures consistent arrow flight every time. Flex Fletch offers a variety of colors, sizes, and styles for any archer to use in their setup. Whether it's for 3D indoor or hunting, Flex Fletch has the vein for Thank you. you Bob. To see these great veins and adhesives like Zing or Flex Bond to get a great seal on your arrow when you fletch, go to your local dealer or flexfletch.com. Flex Fletch, proudly made in the USA, based out of Minnesota. In the mood for a great family treat or a special gift idea, hop on over to the Lotta Pop store located at 647 South Ankeny Boulevard in Ankeny. That's where you'll find over 30 fresh flavors of the most delicious Iowa-grown popcorn in the central Iowa area. You'll love the fresh pop flavors like caramel, caramel apple, kettle corn, jalapeno cheddar, cheddar cheese, birthday cake, or patriotic mix, just to name a few. You'll find something for everyone at Lotta Pop in Ankeny. Harley and his crew can help you pick out the perfect variety pack, tin, or gift package. Lotta Pop has everything you'll need from ready-to-eat popcorn to all the fixings to make great popcorn at any event. Everyone loves popcorn, especially when it's from Lotta Pop. It's the same great popcorn you'll find at the Iowa State Games, locally grown and popped to perfection. Lotta Pop can help with any special occasion, corporate events, and special fundraising for your school. For more information, contact Lotta Pop at 515-262. Yeah, there you go, Scotty. Yeah, speaking of that, we got a couple of giveaways today. Rupert's Roost and Peace Turkey Calls. I got a box and a slate to give away today. If you don't know what uh, you don't know what Scotty's talking about, I'm doing a little contest. I said for the first ten people that uh, order a Rupert's Roost and Peace turkey call, uh, the first six are going to get a Weeby knife, a really nice hunting knife, and uh, we're going to put uh, everybody in for a drawing. To win either a set of uh, DSD hen decoys or their new vinyl pack, your choice. So uh, I think we've got five. So one more order gets a knife, and then the other four that didn't get a knife, I'll uh, do like a ten dollar gift card or something. I'll do another little drawing to say thank you. But uh, we got room for five more people to do it, get in that contest. Rupert's Roost and Peace Turkey Calls dot com or just look up Rupert's Roost and Peace Turkey Calls on Facebook and Todd Rupert will uh, send me your order. Let's talk about 
but a bait system that helps folks catch more fish and is made in Minnesota where they know fishing. The Bait Caddy is an amazing bait system that you can use for open water fishing or ice fishing that keeps your minnows, leeches, shiners, and bait fresh while shiners. you fish. You hear how she said that? Really shiners. She said shiners. You see your bait at all times. Its large lid allows easy access to your bait and keeps it handy and flush in 8 to 10 inch ice holes. No loose parts, it's self-filling, then it floats. Plus, it's made not to crack, warp, or fade. The bait caddy will fit in your live well or troll easy alongside your boat, and it's made in the USA. The bait caddy has a lifetime warranty and will be a bait system your friends will want. For more information, please go online to www.baitcaddy.com. The bait caddy easy access to your bait, made in Minnesota and keeps your bait fresh all day. Hi, this is your old friend Last Speed one. over at Speed. Last Speed. one, everybody. Located in Wall Lake, Iowa. Just stop on over here. We've got a nice selection of new football cards. We're a club car dealer, so we've got a nice selection of new onward cards, as well as a good mix of utility cards as well. We've got a number of pre owned golf cards in all types of price ranges. Guess I'm going to get up at three. I'm usually up anyway. You're always up to one. Take a shower, get a cup of coffee, get, pe- get in the truck, drive an hour south. This is the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on Des Moines Sports Leader, 1350 ESPN. Alright, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. We're live streaming on Facebook thanks to our friends at Imperial RV Center in Ankeny. Denise and Zach, always appreciate the help on that. Ray's Sport Marine up in Grand Rapids had their big uh, open house, man. It was awesome. They had a big fishing legend, Todd Takasake, and they had uh, Rainy Lake Guide and uh, Captain Donnie Obert up there, crappies, crappies, walleyes. They had uh, specials going on all up there in Grand Rapids, and I'm just telling you right now, if you need to, if you need to get a boat or something done, give uh, old Ray's Sport Marine up in Grand Rapids, Minnesota a call. Ask for my buddy Eric. He saved me almost six thousand dollars on my boat. Six grand. Yeah, so it's worth it. Will you uh file that for me? And uh they'll take good care of you like the good morning, Roger up in New York. How you doing there, buddy? Who made the outdoors radio cup? That is made by Grizzly Coolers. Aaron, I'm gonna do a sometime this summer I'm gonna do a do a listener giveaway or something. I got a dozen of these. I'm just, I got so many things going on right now, I don't want to do another contest, so. Uh, Chris, I need a Mia sweatshirt like yours, Dan. You know what, buddy? I actually had to buy, order this myself. I had to, you know, because I could not convince the Rupert, the man, to get a, a, a lighter color sw- a hoodie. You know, I, I, I just get tired of wearing black all the time. You know, it is slimming, though. It does make me look slimmer, I will say that. So I've got a Rupert's one for the blind that's black, but my green one and this one, I, I wear these all the time. I love them. They're just a little more color in them, you know. But, uh, yeah, you're going to have to talk to the Rupert man on that one, Chris. I know he's gotten hit, and he got hit pretty hard on the green one. Because there are a lot of people saying, they're, come on, Rupert. There are a lot of people wanting that green one. You need to t- you need me to head up north and pick up your boat while you're south laughing out I could start to break it in. You know, Richard, if I had it paid for... I might I might take you up on that to be honest with you. Uh, that'd be nice. I uh, I was trying to get I was gonna go get it the other day, but they got a foot and a half of snow up there. Hey, uh, the Midwest Challenge is going on right now. The Walleye Challenge is started March 30th. I actually went out and reported my first zero. Wah, wah, wah. The first first butt kicking by the fish. Uh, I went out to Big Creek the other day before the rain hit, and I didn't catch nothing. But it, nothing, not a thing. But what was really cool is uh, I downloaded that My Catch app on my phone. I got it right here, my that My Catch app, and I took part in the uh, Iowa Midwest Walleye Challenge. I, I signed up, and I didn't do the money one. I just did the free one, right? And it's real. This is easy. See, it says start trip right there. You, I just hit that when I started fishing, and uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. So. Uh, Anyway, I, uh, I hit start trip, and it, it took a log of the whole time I was fishing. And then afterwards, since I hit end trip, and it showed me that I was a bad fisherman, a bad angler, because it said zero catches reported. Wah, wah, wah. 
But you know, the nice thing is, I still might win a prize. You could even win a prize if you don't catch anything. Isn't that awesome? They just want the data. If you don't know what this is, this is a great organization uh, out of out of Canada that's been teaming with our with Iowa for a couple not, uh, years now. Now it's in 12 states and two provinces. But uh, you basically, you download the app. You can do you can do where you can win cash money. Richard, who listens and watches all the time, he won several times last year. What you do is you just go fish. You can fish any body of water you want. And whenever you catch a walleye, you just take your butt board, your measuring board, and you take a picture of it and you upload it to the app. And you could, you're automatically entered to win prizes. And you report how long it is and stuff like that. All that data is shared with the Iowa DNR or the Missouri DNR if you're fishing in Missouri or wherever you're fishing, it's shared with that DNR agency. And it's a great way for them to, to keep an eye on the fishery to know what you know what what the fish are biting that you know if they're not if they get a lot of people in there and they're not catching anything they know they need to go in there and do some restocking or you know make it so people can cut some fish and it's a great deal and uh, i encourage you to do this the midwest walleye challenge just go on your phone and download the my catch app it's free to download it you can actually do a free, you can enter free or you can do a $25. If you want to win, they got $70,000 in cash and prizes they're giving away. And you could win something for not even catching anything. That's a great deal. Because I'll be taking advantage of that a lot, I tr trust me. Yeah, you, yeah, I have a couple zeros too, Richard says. That's funny. Uh, yeah, Chris, I love this hoodie, man. I love the colored hoodies from Rupert's. Uh, David, they don't make that color in you small. <laughs> Uh, your secret fishing spot was so secret to fish, didn't you? That's right. Fishing Dave, good morning, buddy. The DNR, we had Big Creek last night running nets and collecting has begun. The spawn collecting. Yeah, we got Jeff coming on the show here in a couple days. Uh, we'll be talking with him and see what's going on. So, how about that? The collecting, collecting, collecting. Yeah, the Midwest Walleye Challenge. Go check them out. And uh, they got uh, a bunch of stuff. First wall, 100 walleye reported and will get a $20 gift card for each state. How about that? Catch a fish, you might win something right off the bat. That's awesome. Love it, I love it, I love it. All right, let me take another break. It's 631. Good morning, Rick. Good to see you. That walleye contest only in Midwest states. Yeah, uh, for right now, Chris, it's, I don't think it's up in your neck of the woods. It's uh, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, Ohio, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, Missouri, Missouri, Illinois. I think I got everything in there, but it, it will be expanding. I, I promise you. It, Ohio's not too far from you, Chris. Go go fish in Ohio. There you go. Hey, I'll be right back on uh, 1350 ESPN. Heading to your favorite outdoor spot. Is your hunting, fishing, or utility guy ready for any task? Well, my friend Chris Devont, Mr. Young, has to be different. I've got them in gray and black. <laughs> if Hank Green and Teddy would be one in gray and black. That's not true, Todd. I've got a gray and black one. I just need something to brighten my day. Oh, Rupert, man. You just can't, Im Rup, you just can't admit it. The old, the old outdoor man had it going on. He's, I'm telling you, there's a lot. There's at least a hundred people that want that want that green one. Hey, don't listen to me. That's fine. It's not as expensive. There you go, Chris. I love my partners, even you, Rupert. Oh man, I get a lot of compliments on this on this hoodie, man. Everybody loves the logo. This is Dave from JLM Shooter Supply in Urbandale. We are a full service gun shop that specializes. Yeah, and my green one, I'm gonna have to probably get me another green one. I lost my cord. I don't know where my cord went. I've been wearing it so much. As well as folks who like to hunt, we have recently expanded our store to better serve. We're almost getting out of hoodie weather. It's kind of sad. I always get real happy in the fall when we get hoodie weather. JLM Shooter Supply carries fire. Start going up to Minnesota in August. Early in the morning, you can start wearing hoodies. That's so nice. Just gives you a hug, you know? Nice and huggy. 
gun cleaning kits, holsters, and sights. Uh, why don't they call hoodies huggies? Please stop by and see us at 6931 Douglas Avenue. As you get older, it always it will always be hoodie weather. There you go. Morning, Nick. That's 515-331-1577. Hey, students, are you into shooting sports? Well, if you are, have you ever thought about using your passion to help you through college? Grandview University is a small private college that is looking for students that have a passion for the shooting sports and learning. Grandview University has a shooting sports program that if you qualify... Yeah, no New Jersey yet, Chris. For your whole I just looked. On the shooting team. That means your cost won't go up. You will get to experience a new level of competition and learn in a small class size with the feel of a larger campus with a ton of opportunities. So if you're looking to advance your education and love to shoot, why not shoot for a college program that has produced countless All-Americans and has a winning record of four times national champion? Grandview Shooting Sports Athletes will have your ammo, uniforms, travel, and education covered in your scholarship. If you like to shoot for the stars and push yourself, Grandview University wants to talk with you. For more information, check them out at gvvikings.com. If you're into cooking wild game or grilling, you probably love to transform your wild game into Sounds delicious like all the meals there great today. tasting snacks. High Mountain no, Seasonings has everything you need yet. to help you make some of the best well, tasting to, they sauces said they were supposed to be on there. jerky around. Yeah. High Mountain Seasonings offers simple, so easy-to-use kits mm -hmm. that are used at home, including we'll three new low sodium goes, blends that will produce wild game snacks not, your I'm family will love. High Mountain yeah, Seasonings makes well, Chris and I went through the whole list of everything that was supposed to be on. So. With their specialty spices, nice, marinades, nice, and rubs for deer, elk, you know. or your favorite steaks. High Mountain has also just introduced taco and fajita blends that are so spicing not, up I'll kitchens and grills in, all across the country. Look for High Mountain Seasonings at Sportsman's Warehouse happen. or at your favorite what grilling retailer. Or go to himtnjerky.com for recipes. I just paid I just paid the station fees through August. High Mountain Seasons to, uh, has third quarter. you need to make your game yeah, or favorite grilling meats taste great. Hey, America, yep. when you barbecue, cookies is the one. Lots of flavor, lots of goodness. Last one. Nope, we got uh, <laughs> There you go, Chris. We got one more after this. Oh, we got a minute 30. Minute 30, everybody. Minute 30 countdown. Hey, guys. Jackie Bushman here with Buckmasters. When it comes to food plot seed and deer feed, the Mississippi-based Backwoods Attractions product line has you covered. From their food plot blends like Trophy Acre, Lazy Acre, Clover Deluxe, and the popular Dixie Six, to their attractants like Game Changer, Sweet Stuff, and Buck Robert. The best way to put it is, if you're not using Backwoods Attraction products, you better hope your neighbor isn't either. From small to large acreage, Backwoods Attraction has the feed and seed perfect for your hunting property. So do yourself a favor and swing by and support your local co-op or farm supply store and ask for Backwoods Attraction to set yourself up for a successful fall. Going fishing is something we look forward to all week. We all want to be better at it and use the best gear available. Gear that will help us feel the bite better and you know what that superb is. casting performance. Trivia. Well, when it comes Trivia. to sensitivity and longer cast training, Trika has people talking. Trika rods are scientifically proven to be more sensitive with their unique weave design, as much as two times you as sensitive as other costly rod team. brands. Trika uh, casting yeah, performance fine. will give you up to 26% longer cast to keep your bait in the strike zone longer. Trika knows you work hard for your money, and they want to give you a rod that will cast longer and let you feel the bite better without putting the bite. What's up, rod. everybody? Rods are What's everybody doing today? I gotta get all my camera batteries charged. I started doing that already. I got a couple more I gotta get in. I gotta get my tactic cams mounted in. I got my POV stick ready to go from Fourth Arrow. I got my my six my six point oh and my five oh. You're listening to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. Pure Whitetail's got a brand new website. Go check that out, purewhitetail.com. they got big deals going on since they launched the website. Make sure you do that, and uh, they'll, they'll Josh and Grant will take good. they got some great prizes. they got five or six hunts are giving away. So it's, it's pretty cool. Purewhitetail.com, go check them out. 
All right, so uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna do a trivia thing here real quick. Uh, just make sure you have not won 30 days. I had somebody ask me the other day, "Does it count on the app?" I said, "Yeah, if you win, you can't win on either on the shows. You got to wait 30 days from the time you win, okay? Because we're trying to make it fair for everybody." Um, so just uh, good morning, Larry Goodwin. Go Hawks! Yeah, that was a great game last night. I was I was about having a stroke. Uh, go, uh, go Hawks. Good Larry. Good morning. We all love deals. There you go, Scotty. Thank you. Um, so here's what we're going to do for, if you haven't won anything off the app or off the, uh, radio show in the last 30 days, I'm going to give away one of these Rupert's Roost in Peace turkey calls made from Todd Rupert in Pennsylvania, my buddy. 244-1350, 244-1350. You got to be able to come in. And, uh, I just want to know what is the name of the clothing that I wear? When I do, that I wear when I am in the woods. If you can tell Andrew the answer to that, you can win your choice of a call. So, there you go. Uh, let's see. Got to, uh, Hey, don't forget next week to start sending me those 30-second or 60-second clips with your Tacticam camera. Uh, so, just uh, make sure you take advantage of that and email those to me, and I'll put you in that turkey hunting uh, challenge that we're doing. And uh, we got a gear, uh, Rupert's Roost and Peace Turkey uh, contest uh, or prize we're giving away. And uh, some uh, DSDs and some other stuff. So make sure you do that. Okay, let's see. Which one? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you're the one. Secret Listener Contest winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Stuart Martin no, of yeah, Michigan. Stuart Martin of Matthew Michigan. Michigan. Uh, he is the secret uh, listener contest uh, winner. So, Stu, thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Congratulations. I will be emailing you if you're listening right now. Send me your your uh, shipping address and everything, and uh, I'll get your prize going. So that's exciting about that. All right. Okay, May 10th, we got the Iowa Cubs game celebrating the outdoors. Gates open up at 6 p.m. Fireworks after the game. The game's at 7.08. First 1,000 fans are going to receive an Iowa Cubs dry bag, 50, 500 red, 500 blue. I've got a 75-quart Grizzly cooler we're giving away that day. An outdoors damn prize pack and maybe a gearhead bow. I, I gotta I gotta figure that out still. Um, anyway, uh, we'll have tickets. We're gonna give away probably give away a set of tickets later today. Maybe game is gonna be May tenth. Uh, tickets are eleven dollars each. Four dollars of that will go to support the Iowa Hunter Education and Instruction Association. That's a great cause. So come on out. There will be a bunch of conservation groups there. Andrew and I'll be there. We want to see you at the Iowa Cubs on May tenth. So come on out and uh, check that out. All right. Dun, 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 dun. I told you about the My Catch app already. I don't know about that one. Told you about uh, all that. No, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so we'll see what's uh, going on. We get a winner? Yes. We okay, we got a winner for trivia already. There you go. Who won? Pete? Pete? Congratulations, Pete. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I'll check with them, and uh, yeah, we'll, regardless, we'll have one for you. Perfect. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Uh, Aaron, it'll be whatever you shoot, left or right-handed. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I'll dun, 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 I got that, I got that, I got that. I'm just waiting on Andrew. I'm trying to stall so I can see what's going on. Which one did he want? Well, he said he'd be able to go with any. The box call, he had, it looks, sounds like he had a preference for, but he said he is not picky. He knows that uh, he's, he's just happy to get whatever. Okay, well, whatever. There you go. I, you got a whatever, Pete. Is that is that Pete the donut man? Ariadne. Yeah, where's our donuts at, Pete? You know, it, it's funny. It's, I, would, I would say Pete can't win anymore until we start getting donuts. Well, he is. He has tried quite a bit, and Pete finally he got it in there, and he he got it right off the bat. And he goes, <laughs> he was very excited. The answer about was that. a limit tick. Yeah, a limit tick. I didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't want to give it away. Right. Yeah, that's all right. That's why I was kind of stalling. Hey, uh, a limit tick. Uh, Game Hide has got big bundles on sale this weekend. They got a new mossy oak uh, bundle, and they also got a limit tick bundles. 
So if you have not have uh, your Olympics yet, go on to GameHide.com and uh, box call, please. Nope, you're not getting it, Pete. Until I get donuts, <laughs> you're not getting a box call. Matter of fact, I might even just throw the, your, out, your thing out all together. What do you think, Andrew? Oh, man. Pete's been waiting so long to get that. He's been so close. I, yeah, but it's kind of hard to, to not give it to him. Well, I understand that, but you know how long it's been since I had a maple bacon, a maple bacon donut? <laughs> Can't even say it. It's been so long. It's been so long that you're yeah. delirious. Yeah. All right, Pete's got the box call. So, uh, box call for Pete. So we'll, next hour, we'll give uh, the slate over and under. That's got you two surfaces underneath, one underneath, one over, and that's a great call. I run that call myself, so... Big shout out to Pete though. He's yeah, uh, gamehigh.com. They got big sales going on, 30% off or more right now. Go check it out. Make sure you tell them Outdoors Dan sent you. Will you do that for me? All right. Uh, I will, Dan. I'll tell them. Yeah, you tell them. You need to tell them. Do something for your job. <laughs> um, okay, I told you about the uh, Tacticam camera challenge we're doing. You know, I think I'm going to give away, um, I think oh, we're going to give a Tacticam camera away to the winner of that. I don't know. I'll either give away a uh, trail camera or I'll give away a, a, a five a, a POV camera. It's whatever you guys. I don't care. We'll figure it out. Uh, thank you guys. You're welcome, Pete. I still I still ain't got no donuts, Pete. Hey, he's he's doing it. I believe as from what he said for his son as well. So it's not just for him. It's for others. So Pete's thinking of, of yeah. the people, not just him. Aaron, where does Pete make his donuts at? Pete works for Daylight Donuts, Pete. Or Aaron. He's all over the country. So there you go. All right, let me take another quick break. I'll be right back. And then I got fishing reports. We got to do the Bay Caddy track of fishing reports. I got fishing reports to do. And then we got uh, Larry McCoy coming on to talk with you. Gearhead Archery's got their big open house this weekend. If you're up by Madison, Wisconsin, stop by Gearhead. Skip's got pulled pork. He's got pop. He's got special deals on bows. He's got. Did I did I talk about that Movets Outdoors event? Give me my uh, sheet back. Uh, I want to. We got a new partner on the show. It's Movet Outdoors. Uh, they're a big vet organization out of Missouri that they take uh, vets all over the country hunting and fishing. They take them on uh, survival school training. Hey, Peter, I'm sending you a package out. Another package out today. Hey, does that mean that you're going to send him a box call, Todd, and I can keep this one? If you haven't tried a Limitech yet, I recommend it. Give it a try. Don't pick. A, I haven't picked early single early fall bow. I usually get a lot of them. Chris, I haven't had a tick in six years, man, since I've been wearing them. I, and chiggers. It stops chiggers. Yeah. So, hey, Roop, does that mean you're – what am I doing there, Roop? Are you throwing him a free box call, or am I giving him the one you sent me? See, I'm trying to work – see, yeah, I'm always trying to work old Todd out, see. Todd, I'm just kidding you. I'm going to give him this one. All right, I got to go. Andrew's breaking me. Movet Outdoors, they got their big shoot today in Silex, uh, Missouri, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. That big buck has a nope, just merch. Okay. What about the Todd Rupert bobblehead? Can we get a Rupert bobblehead, Todd? Would you buy a Rupert bobblehead, Aaron? You know, have they have like a bobblehead with you holding your frick, you know, your paw? Get it out of the stack. Like yeah. Have your big old turkey tattoo on your farm with your hand up like this. That'd be a, that would be an epic bobblehead. Yeah. Oh boy. Morning, Daryl. Hey, I got that video. Morning, Jake. I got that pic, uh, video you sent me, Daryl. What was that about? Was that was that something in the sky or what? I couldn't tell what that was. I just saw something floating around. If bow hunting or archery is your passion, get to Archery Field and Sports in Altoona and see what's new in your sport. Archery Field and Sports has been helping archers. That's a big. I might tip it over. Well, that's true, Todd. That's true. You could always put a little hat on it to balance it out, I guess. Oh, Roop. Roop, Roop, Roop. Roop, Roop, Roop. 
They also have a 40-yard indoor range that will help you with getting sighted in. Archery Field and Sports has leagues and personal training sessions available for you to train for the upcoming seasons that will help you fill your tags. I got caught up. I think I'm all caught up. I talked about Gearhead's Open House. I talked about Movets. I talked about the Turkey Challenge we're doing this weekend or Monday. Talked about Mo. Uh, talked about uh, the Mo Outdoors event. I talked about uh, the Outdoors Day at the I Cubs. I come all caught up. I'm ahead of schedule. So, do you still have uh, you still have uh, Andrew Pullen's uh, number? So, whoever wins tickets, you're going to have to email them or send them to him. Like, you're going to need to get their email or email. our phone number and then get that to Andrew <coughs> so he can get their tickets. We got five pairs to give away. Do you hear they ran out of hot dogs at the baseball games the other day? How do you run out of hot dogs at a baseball game? That's like a staple. Chris says, make a bobblehead with a slate call and the bottom it will stay. You know, that's a great idea, Chris. Roof, did you hear that? Make your bobblehead with the slate call as a base. That is a great, uh, what a great idea, Chris. Man, I'm telling you, Roof, you got people coming up with million dollar ideas for you, Todd. That's that's awesome. The Todd, the Rupert Roost in Peace bobblehead call. You could actually take it out in the blind with you and hold the bobblehead figure and get your striker. And get, man, that's awesome. Chris said, I'll buy one. Wow, they just, my buddy Gary told me they just found a 200 inch deer in Iowa on the ground. Somebody, they did, somebody killed it and didn't find it. A 200 inch. That's crazy. Hey, Dan here. How many times have you had to quit hunting because your feet got cold or uncomfortable? Well, I have a way to keep your feet feeling great Look at that. in any weather or outdoor activity. Have you heard of That's Norlander crazy. Sock Company? Norlander Sock Company uses high quality alpaca to produce some of the best socks out there. Alpaca socks. That's a stud box, man. Feeling great all day. Alpaca socks will wick away any moisture that you might encounter. Look at the junk on those brows. Look at the mass and junk on those brows. Good morning, Brant. I don't know, Aaron. He didn't tell me. Gosh, you, that thing's got some mass on him. Mean, look, kickers on the back. Look at the flyers on the back of those G3s. Hmm. Or G2, sorry. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd be bomb, Chris, Richard, if I shot that and didn't find it. It happens. I'd be sick. I'd just like to see him. Hey, they got that on. That's that? Velvet antler, that's new. Yeah, they got that on. Spray down with fan lock, and you're ready to hunt or hang your fan in five days. For your velvet hunts, take a bottle of velvet lock with you. Once you get your tag on, spray down the velvet on the rack, and it's protected and sealed, ready for your taxidermist. Trophy Clean is also available to keep your mounts clean at home and keeps bugs off your prize mounts and keeps them from fading. For more information on Velvet Antler Technologies mm -hmm. and their field use products, please That's check a them heck out of a deer. www.velvetantlertechnologies.com. I'll see if I can get the whole story on that, folks. Opportunity on the hunt. Protect that special memory with Velvet Antler Technologies. Larry McCoy is coming up next from Respect the Game. If you like Larry Mack, don't go anywhere. You're heading out on your morning hunt well before sunrise, so you can stay undetected from that giant you've been chasing all season. Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly where your stand or blind location is without letting... Well, we were supposed to come back. Morning, Bill. Morning, Carrie. Onyx is one of the most important well, pieces of hunting gear that you can use. Always 
Apple oh, with you. Coming back the here. Onyx Hunt app allows you not only to get from your truck to your hunting spot, <laughs> Hard to say, it also allows you to mark and save your parking spots, scrapes, food plots, rope lines, right. or some possible ready? next Yeah, I'm ready. I was ready the 60 Onyx seconds ago. Is also a great way to well, see they put property. a... No uh-huh. Uh-huh. Onyx uh-huh. is a uh-huh. you can take anywhere. It's recognized by game wardens all around the country as a valuable hunting tool. Right. So... If you Onyx, to everybody, get your Onyx. Have the ability to save information that will help you be a better hunter. Go download the Onyx Hunt app at your app store today. All right, welcome back to you, the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 SPN. Fishing reports brought to you by Bay Caddy and Trika Fishing today. Blackhawk Lake water temperatures in the mid 40s. Black crappie bite is fair. Trying around the fish house at Town Bay or around the ice house point. Gills are slow. Wallies are fair. Yellow perch are fair. Brushy Creek courtesy docks are in on the northeast and south ramps. One of the two docks is in on the west ramp. Black crappie bites fair. Bass are fair. Walleye are slow. Perch are fair. Green Valley docks are in on the boat ramps. Largemouth bass are slow. Jigs fish around the shoreline. Are catching some uh, so all sizes of largemouth bass, Lake Ikara. Uh, docks are in around Marina South, both ramp near Lakeview Campground. Channel Catfish Bite is fair. Little River uh, Watershed Lake, the docks are in on the main boat, lamp, bay, blah, main boat ramp. Black crappie bite is fair. Small jigs tip with a minnow deer, uh, deer the, uh, near the deep cedar trees or in the creek channels are producing the best crappie bite. Uh, three miles, lake level is eight feet below normal pool. That's horrible. Twelve mile creek, docks are on the main boat ramp. Bag, uh, the black crappie bite there is slow. Try jigging, uh, tipped with a minnow, fishing along the creek channels and flooded timber. Uh, they are You might have to do some sorting on some of your crappie. Big creek, walleye bite is fair. You can catch the best walleye shallow and uh, evening casting jigs with plastics or live minnows near the rocky shorelines or jetties. Now that's what I was doing and I didn't catch nothing. Nada. Zip. There's your fishing report. <laughs> Thanks to Bob and the gang at Bay Caddy, and thank you to uh, everybody up at Trica. Uh, bow shop isn't open till 9, so I'm not going anywhere. Got to pick up my new bow I won at the Wild Turkey Bank. But there you go. But the fishing is still good at 3 Mile. There you go, Richard. Thank you. Richard knows, man. He's up on his fishing reports, so that's exciting. All right, we got a minute or so, and then we're going to try to get the man, the myth, the legend, Larry McCoy on. He's going to start, uh, I think he's heading to Kansas tomorrow. So he's going to be there before me. I already got Vanderpool there in camp ahead of me. I'm telling you, man, they need to, it's just not fair. You know, I, I, I started the whole thing. I was down here before anybody else. And now I got Vanderpool down there. I got Larry down there, you know. Taking all my honey holes, I get down there and it's like everything's messed up. That's what they always say when I go there. Dan's been hunting there. It ain't going to be good for him now about three months now. <laughs> Shut up, you idiots. They're always picking on me. Well, if the shoe fits. Hey, I don't mess anything up. I just sit there. I'm quiet. I don't do nothing. I don't know if you're quiet. I'm quiet. No. Rupert's Roost in Peace bobblehead slay call. Boy, Chris ain't going to let that one go. <laughs> Philip cuts the food line too. He does. Hey, when it comes to food, there you don't don't get between. You know, Philip might be five foot tall, but you you don't you don't get between him and food. It's not pretty. I agree a hundred percent with you. Hey, we'll be right back on thirteen fifty ESPN. Is it time to get your carpet looking like it did when you first moved in? Or have you had some other oh. issues that need to be taken care of in your home or business? Well, if you call I can't decide if I'm going to use a decap Monday or if I'm going to just use a regular broadhead. I don't know. I got my decaps all ready to go. I got those my silent nights, man. Those those things steer that arrow that... that I did a video. I shot a drew a turkey head on a pillow and shot it, and it just blew the pu- the pillow just blew up, man. It just devastated it. I don't know what to do. I guess it really depends on the weather. If it's cruddy weather, I'll just probably use my regular mechanical. I like a mechanical on a turkey. We'll see how it goes. The thing about a decap, man, if you hit if if you get a shot at ten yards or so, it's over. So. If you miss, the turkey's fine. 
If you hit them, they're done. You don't have to go chasing after them. Chris says decap. So did Aaron. And that broadhead's like four inches, man. Take both. Well, I'll, I'll have at least one regular arrow in there if I do that. Sometimes they hang out there 15 or 20 yards, and I don't want to decap. I did shoot one at 20 yards, but last year and the year before, that was, a, that was probably one of the best shots I ever made. He turned around, he he, did, he just wasn't going to come in, he started walking straight away, and I put that pin right on the back, uh, bottom of his head, and, and I just, it was awesome. Andrew, Andrew couldn't have made that. Good morning, Skippy! I could have made that with a butternut. Yeah. I've already talked about your open house twice, Skippy. I wish I could be up there for you today, buddy. I'd like to get some pulled pork. That sounds good. Yeah. All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio on 1350 SPN. Hour number two is brought to you by the fine folks at Gearhead Archery, uh, Skippy Peterson and Incorporated. Uh, they got their big open house today uh, up in Madison, Wisconsin. And go check them out. They got their new off of the new headquarters. I actually got a new bow coming my way. I got a new roller. I got a new Pivot 30 with a roller guard. Woo! I'm excited. I think Skip sending me another one so I can. I, it is insane. It's going to be extra smooth. Yeah, I, and my my bow was smooth anyway. I liked it anyway. But well, uh, this new pivots. Uh, I shot it at the Deer Classic. It's a heck of a bow too. So, so uh, I'm excited to get that on Monday. But I, I think I think I think I think he put another roller guard in there so I can I can convert my B30. <laughs> And uh, but I'm gonna I'll probably wait till I go to Kansas yeah, to do that. So yeah, I'm excited. Go see Skippy today if you're up in Wisconsin. <laughs> I would be up there because you know if you can get a pop and you can get a deal, he's probably got prizes. I know he's got prizes. I know. You know, and I know there's a couple people from Des Moines coming because uh, Skippy told me he was. So go get him, everybody. All right, well, come on, let's get the guest on. He's over there having a 20 minute conversation again. I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Our next guest is a man that has been known to butcher buffets all across the Midwest. The man is known from coast to coast for doing a 30-minute deer set and getting out of town. Mr. Larry McCoy from Respect the Game. What's up, Larry? Oh, not much. Just trying to get this crab around good and wait for him to load it back up. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, boys, that guy needs my pay. I will tear one of them things up. There ain't no doubt. Hey, what happened to Jay? Hey, what happened to Jay? Hey, I am one of those guys where they, they, they walk up and they're like, you've been here too long. <laughs> 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 Jay, you know, I don't know. Yeah, when Larry goes to a buffet, they bring an egg timer to the table. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's Philip's birthday today, don't you? Is it? Yeah, it's P. Vitty's birthday today. There we go. I want to call him for a bit. Yeah, he got a turkey out there where we shot them. Uh, we shot that buck last year. Yeah, yeah, he sent me a picture yesterday, and uh, him and Clayton, old uh, Hannah's, uh, Dan Hannah's grandson, he took grand, uh, Dan Hannah's grandson out there, and it looked like they had a good hunt. So. Yeah, yeah, that place is loaded with turkeys, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what? Uh, what the, what the, what the, what the, what, the, what, uh, what was I going to ask you? I was going to ask you, and I just totally slipped my mind. Uh, hey, what's your favorite Rupert's Roost in Peace turkey call? Uh, over and under, probably. Yeah, see? That's what I got in my hand right here, that over and under. Yeah. Over and under is a good one. I do like, uh, as far as the diaphragm, you know, the ridge runners are a good call. The, uh, just straight up bat wing is a very popular call as well. I uh, just, you could do, you know, you can do a lot with the call once you get to where you know position right in your mouth and the call starts to break in. Uh, depending on what side you like to run your air through, you know, depending on your palate, it's a it's really a easy call to get the maneuver and run well. Yeah, 
I got the I got the D I got the blind up yesterday. I'm ready to go Monday. I, I put it right where I told you I was going to put it, so it looks yeah. good. Good deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I saw some strut yeah. mark. I saw some strut marks and stuff where they've been running in the dirt. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm actually have a uh, uh, like I said this when we were up there this fall, boy. There's a there's a big flock of birds up there with a with a group of toms in it. So I imagine there's a few of them around there for sure. Yeah. What uh, do you guys are? Are you heading to Kansas tomorrow or Monday? I'm gonna head tomorrow. Uh, after talking to Donovan, we're gonna, you know, scout probably scout tomorrow. You can see we can't rear some birds for the, uh, you know, pretty much for the archery opener, and then uh, and hopefully we can get on one before this eclipse. Yeah. And then, are you gonna be using that slick trick uh, decap, or are you, what are you doing? I'm gonna have to be honest with you. I shot the. Uh, so I shot the decap, the, the slicker decap. I built up a few of the ultra arrows and went out and shot. I didn't have to move anything, uh, you know, even shooting at my draw length, which is, is you know, it's a lot longer draw length. So I, uh, and dude, when I shot, it was it was just money. So I shot all the way out to like 25 yards, and it was just money. And then, so I didn't have to move anything. So, yeah, I'm going to definitely have some of the uh, slicker decaps. I'm going to have some with your torches with me as well. Just in case you get old, that old dude wants to sit out there and, you know, a little too long and doesn't want to commit. Might have to send one out there and touch him. Yeah. I had Jim Coffey on uh, at 7 uh, asking him about the, what the eclipse is going to do to the birds. Have you ever hunted it during an eclipse before? No, but I was I was actually I've been I thought about that before when they first started coming out. So I was reading some stuff on it, and listen, they say it can affect wildlife and everything too. As far as uh, 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 but as far as what it's you know how it's going to affect them, I don't really know. You know? Yeah, Jim said that they'll probably just kind of they'll hunker down and stuff when it starts getting dark. Yeah, yeah. I just hope to have, hey, I just hope to have my eyes on on some because I can go sneaking in there like a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right before it starts to get dark, just, just have your eyes on. <laughs> just go sneaking in there like a ninja, wait for it to light back up. Yeah, Skippy. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, that's what the biologist said. Skippy he thinks they're just going to hunker down and stuff. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, most, yeah, most likely that's. Um, I mean, that's what what I would think they would do. Uh, it's. I don't know that they're really just going to like you know I mean like fly up the roost or anything like that, but I. Don't, uh, but you never know. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know. Never. I've never hunted during a during a eclipse to see. So, and I think maybe it depends on where you're at too. You know how much you know, how dark is it going to get? Yeah, I don't think we're going to have a total full eclipse here in Iowa. I think you, uh, Oklahoma and uh, Indianapolis. I think if you go south of us, I think they're going to have more of a full one. Yeah, you might yeah, get a you might get a full one in Missouri in Kansas. Oh really? Yeah, you yeah. might, because that's south. That'd be southwest of us. So, oh, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, if I do a job, I'm gonna be on in that morning. Cause what time? When does all that first start? I, I think at? I think Jenny says it starts around noon or twelve thirty. Yeah. Well, hopefully by then we'll have one hanging upside down. Yeah. Are you gonna hunt off the ground this year, or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm gonna hunt off the ground. I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, Uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hunt off the ground for sure. I don't know how I'm going to hunt off the ground, but I'm going to hunt off the ground. So you might be using a, you might be using a, uh, lay down blind. You might be using a, a little butt seat thing. You know, what, what's, yeah, them, what's, them th what's them things called that we, that I got last year that Donovan and you were using? Those little seats? Oh, the ground, oh, the ground pound systems, yep. Yeah. From Horn Hunter, yep, they, uh. Oh, man, they're nice. It's like a turkey vest with a chair kind of, and you can yeah. I mean, it's got just enough pockets in there to, to get there. It's got a big bag on the back, and you can pack some decoys or whatever. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's nice. Uh, it's, it's nice. I like it. They actually was designed for, like, coyote hunters and stuff. But uh, I was like, man, I, I'm going to take a turkey out. And that's what I've been doing. So. Huh. What are you going to use for, what are you going to do for decoys? You going with your full strutter first? Probably we'll see what the wind's doing. You know, if it's super, super windy, I might go with the main motion pair, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes, you know. I mean, I'm one of those guys, the last decision guy, you know, that morning, I think I'm just going to grab this one. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and go, but, uh, 
but those new DSD packs was gonna make it nice. The, um, oh, the bino, the bino decoy packs. No, and the bag, the backpack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be able to be able to drop the decoys in there and and, uh, and go because it's gonna free up a hand for sure. So, uh, but you can fit a lot more. It says you can fit two in that middle, but boy, you can fit you can fit more decoys in there if you want. I I got all kinds of stuff in there. Huh. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm jacked up to, to get after it. I know that. Uh, birds were driving like down here in Missouri uh, yesterday just working on the farm mowing and stuff and, and we had some birds firing off down the tender there. It was a uh, uh, get your blood pumping. Hey, did you, did you get one of those new fourth arrow um, uh, POV uh, holders that's got that big clamp on it? And it's got the, it's got that telescoping. Uh, what do you call that? It's like a cable, but you 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 put your your POV or your camera on there for inside the blind, or out. You could do it outside too. You know what I'm talking about? Man, I've got the telescoping rod thing. Yeah, you. It's uh, got that big. It's got that big, huge clamp that you, you it, or. Yeah. 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 I've I've, I've seen them. Uh, I I have not used it actually in. In the blind, just because I've been, I've been hunting in a blind, I've been going out. But you could clamp it to a tree or whatever if you wanted to as well, or just stick it in the ground. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, for deer hunting, that thing's going to be that thing's going to be really cool for in the tree next year. It's that it's that oh. Silent Flex POV clamp. I got you. Uh, oh, you talk. Oh, you're talking about the one that with the yeah. I've got that one for sure. The one that just clamps anywhere, like a kind of like that. Uh, it's got like a big uh, like a big. Uh, I, it's it's I don't know what you call that. Like Andrew? a snake with a clamp. Like yeah. A clamp. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got those. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I uh, Joe said. Yeah, I use that everywhere. In tree everywhere. Well, if you're gonna, if you're ground hunting, you could put that on a branch next to you just for a second angle. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I use it everywhere. Literally, like in a tree, and shoot, I've used it in my truck getting getting other angles. I've used it, I've used it everywhere. Yeah, it's, I, a, it's an awesome little camera. Man. Yeah, I'm showing everybody on Facebook Live right now. It's that Silent Flex POV clamp. But yeah, that thing's. Um, I'm going to use the heck out of that. Uh, not not only for turkey season, but when we're filming deer hunts this fall, that thing's going to be great because I don't have to worry about screwing anything. I I can just clip that on a branch or a limb, and I'm I'm ready to go. Or you could even put yeah. that on your stand. Oh, for sure. Like I said, I mean, we, not this last fall, I mean, there wasn't a hunt that I didn't have have it, using it. It was, it is so versatile. It's, it's literally, I mean, you could put it anywhere. As long as you have something to clamp to, you can, you can literally u- utilize it, any type of POV camera. Yeah. Anything that needs to mount to a quarter 20 screw. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have a tactic cam on that. I don't know if that'll hold my little Sony POV or my DSLR, that little one I got. That might be a little heavy for that. It depends on how you bend it. If you kind of hook it down and bend it up closer to the end, it'll probably will. It, it'll uh, hold it? That or if it's, if it's straight up, as long as it's not, you know, you don't have it more at a down, downward angle or, or something like that. If you, you know, it's just going to depend on the situation. Yeah. So what are you going to do for your calls? I mean, I know you're going to use uh, your, your you you uh, you guys look, your mouth calls and friction calls and everything else, but you're going to get aggressive right off the bat, or you're just going to wait and see what the birds are doing? No, I'm going to get right after. Them. Are I mean, you? I don't, oh yeah, I'm going to get right after. Them. Not do a little sissy call from a rooper because uh, it's screaming, it's honed in, and it's a uh, it's a screamer. Yeah, that's uh, he's not making fun of the call, yeah. folks. That's actually the name of the little box call Todd came out with. It's called a little little sissy. Yeah, and uh, we uh, yeah, so it was. It's I'm ready to put that thing to use. Well, it's got a it's got the, a little bit higher end yelp and uh, got a little bit more squeak to her. So uh, if they do end up, you know, shutting their mouth uh, out there and don't don't want to be vocal, then usually I bet you can make one. You can look one hit it with that one. Well, I, yeah, I think we've both had really good luck with box calls out there. I know last year you and I were doing, you and I were hunting somewhere, and then you, uh, we we saw them down there, uh, down there by Haina's, member, And then I went and dropped yep. off in that field, and I, it was so windy, I hit that box call, and I had one on the ground within forty five minutes. That we just they they came across the road. I couldn't see them, but they that box call, man, that it, it made a big difference for my hunt that day. 
Oh, I'll tell you, anywhere that you're in open, you're in open country, not saying it doesn't work in the woods because it does, but literally anywhere, but in open country, I've had some of the best success. It just carries farther, you, the, you know, the birds can hear it, you can, you can throw the sound, you can, you know, there's, there's a lot that you can do, and like, if you are in the timber, you can, you can tone it down and not have to be so loud on it, and then switch over to a diaphragm to get one to answer or whatever. That's pretty close, but in, like out in Kansas, I mean, there's, Sometimes that wind's blowing so hard that uh, you can't even hear yourself. Yeah. And, and you got to be pretty darn close to the birds. And all the things that they're going to hear is that box call. So, uh, so it's imperative to have a box call in your pack, that's for sure. Yeah. Right, yeah. Jackie Nicole said to tell you hi. Oh, hey. You, you Jackie from Pure Whitetail? Yep. Yep. Uh, Chris wants to know, what's the first turkey call you're going to make, Larry Mack? The first turkey call I'm going to make, uh, it's probably going to be just some, some tree pups, I imagine. Just probably just some tree pups and some really tall uh, if I if I'm in there close. If I'm just trying to locate one, uh, you know, if, if we see the bird through, so I'm set up quite a ways away, I'm probably going to get on that box call right after it gets light. Yeah. Uh, and let them know what's going I'm going to keep my eyes on. A lot of times, too, I'll leave my set up there if I can see, if I know where the birds are at. If I'm looking and up just to where I can see. I keep an eye on which way the bird fits out and just stand over in the woods and hit that box. Especially out there in that open country. Hit that box, get their attention. A lot of times they start moving in your direction and then you can move back over where your setup's at. Because, uh, you know, uh, when you're in that open country like that, uh, there's a lot, several times I've been so successful leaving my decoys there and actually pulling the birds right back to me. Uh, so getting up, moving, making something happen, you know, get up there and hit them and, and get their attention and then start bringing them back and just walk them right back. You said, get set down, and pretty soon just keep at them. Once they can hear, because a lot of times the birds are around, they just can't hear you. Right. And uh, and once they can hear you, they'll commit. Yeah, it's, it's different down there with Kansas with them big rolling hills and stuff. I mean, they could be within 75 yards of you and you wouldn't even know it. Yeah, oh yeah. The one that I killed out of the layout line, uh, the whole story behind that whole that bird, I mean, that bird was 150, 200 yards from us. It was so windy, I was getting up and literally, I got sneaking along this creek, hitting the box call, it was so windy, and he still couldn't hear me, and I, was, I, was, I got probably 75 yards from him. And finally, I uh, I got his attention and, let's, and had to, and just, I saw this still working. I was just easing in that creek, calling, and walked all the way back, got set up. And then finally, he, uh, he ended up coming, committing all the way in because he could, he could hear me and he could respond uh, versus just sitting out there in the wind. Because that's the one thing about those Kansas birds out there. I mean, if it's windy, well, they'll, they'll stay right out in the fields. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to them. Well, they, <laughs> but, yeah, because they can see forever. Yep. Yeah, yeah for sure. But, yeah. but uh, well, I mean, they'll sit out there, they're, their tip of their fan will be touching the back of their head, <laughs> you know, a lot of times. And yeah. It's uh, it's crazy. But, uh, and then, you know, and, the, and I do the same thing in Missouri. I mean, if I hear birds way off there, uh, the biggest, because one of the biggest mistakes people make is they'll get a bird to answer, and they start going right to them. Uh, and then next thing you know, they don't realize that the bird's coming to them, and they run into each other, and then spook, you just, you just, uh, you know, blow your hunt. But, so sit down, take your time. If you locate a bird, take your time. Especially just you know, take your time. Really assess the situation and see if he's going to call. Let him get this little bit closer. If he sounds closer, set up. If he sounds like he's getting further away, inch a little bit closer. It's a little bit closer. Take your time. What you don't want to happen is you know him to be coming to you and you to be going to him, and you guys you know you pop over the hill, boom, there he is. Yeah, don't uh, don't spook your bird. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah, you were down. You were down low in the creek where you he couldn't see you. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. We're visiting with Larry McCoy from Respect the Game TV. We'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. Are you into hunting, fishing, camping, or tailgating? If you are, we'd like to introduce you to Arctic Ice. Arctic Ice is a brand new way to keep your game, beverages, Hey, Fourth Arrow's got a 50% off sale going on right now. If you want to get that POV steak or that clamp. Not have the 
a slushy mess that can contaminate what's in your cooler. If you like to hunt or fish, look at the Alaskan Series or Arctic Ice Packs that will keep your game or fish at 34 degrees for three to four days. If you're wanting to really freeze things up, try the Tundra Packs that can keep your wild game Coming in June, we're going to give a few of these away. The chilling brew packs. It'll keep your beverages of choice at frosty cold temperatures four times longer than what a bag of ice can. If you want your cake, well, Larry's gonna be packing, man. Fresh and cold as yeah. possible. Without yeah. the mess of regular ice, go check out Arctic Ice Packs today. You can find models of Arctic Ice Packs at Sportsman's Warehouse or at www.arctic-ice.com. Hi, this is Dr. Don Gilbert from New Life Counseling Services with offices in West Des Moines and Ankeny, Iowa. I know things can be just get out there and have fun, Aaron. That's all you can do. Relationship issues, parenting struggles, anxiety, depression. That's how you learn, buddy. Just looking for a new direction or plan in their life. Just call every 15, 20 minutes and try not to call too loud or call call too much. Or just helping with everyday stress. Please consider calling me at New Life. We offer a family-friendly, straightforward approach to helping you to get through the layers of stress that can be harmful to your health, relationships, and your work. The staff at New Life offer one-on-one -on -one sessions that get right to the heart of the matter. We work with you so you can discover better choices on That's how our to first Michigan you might be dealing with in your life. Yeah. When you're looking for someone we to have never had you, a Michigan winner here. before. Please yeah, consider yeah. calling us mm -hmm. for a confidential appointment at New Life. 515-225-4006. Getting out there a little bit. Or 964-5003 in Ankeny. Also find us 24-7 at newlifecounseling.com. We are here to help you when you need us. Trails are not always easy. That's why your boots need to fit and perform when you're outdoors. Itasca Footwear has been helping folks on their adventures for over 40 That's years. That's what Todd Rupert looks Itasca like, everybody. over the years that using only the highest quality materials and hardware is the way to make footwear for the whole family in all situations. Whether you're out elk hunting, chasing moose or whitetails, riding snowmobile trails, or ice fishing in sub-zero weather, Itasca Footwear will provide you not only a great fit, but comfort for all day adventures. Itasca has sizes and styles for the Tyler, it's called a, the science. The uh, comfort and fit that you look for in footwear so everyone can enjoy their day. It is what called, hang on, I still got it here, the Silent Flex POV plant. For more information or footwear styles, please go to Silent www. Flex POV clamp. Right there. Itasca footwear. They will keep you on the move. Hey, are you in the market for a new RV this year? Here's a place to help you start looking for that new travel partner for your next vacation or outdoor adventure. Head on over to the Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Just go to RV accessories. It's right there. Imperial RV has been serving Iowa camping enthusiasts for 50 years. Thanks for Security asking, buddy. Or fifth wheel RV Handsome. Sprinter, well, thank you, Todd. I think I'm average at best, but thank you, buddy. That have built-in living quarters for rodeo and horse lovers. Imperial <laughs> RV also features Rupert, a full service. Let's show that picture of Todd. Todd comes under handsome, now. huh? Imperial <laughs> RV can finance on site to help you with all your financing needs. They also have a full service parts department for anything you might need to keep your camper going. They're open Monday through Saturday, located at 17. Do coyotes and fox chew on antlers? Absolutely. Island. Please call them at 515 964 1424 or check them out online at imperialrvcenter.com. I've actually gotten a camera picture of a trail cam picture of a coyote carrying a shed, Jerry. Making memories to last a lifetime. Let's talk about a story. An Iowa story about a dream that took several years to come true in Osceola, Iowa. It's the story of Revelton Distillery. You're welcome, company. Tyler. These You'll like it. It's nice. Whiskeys, and Make sure you tell them you heard about it from Outdoors Dan or the Outdoor, outdoor Call. It's amazing hearing the customer's descriptions of how unique each bottle looks and how each spirit tastes and satisfies with everything. Well, Revelton's got some big news. Hey, Revelton's in Costco now. Did you know that? It is. It's in Costco. Well, Hank's, a, Hank's not on today. He must be youth hunting. Creating at the distillery every day. Revelton Distillery is open Wednesday through Sunday in Osceola. They're located at 1400 West Clay Street. Remind me right when I get back. I need to redo that Revelton commercial. Revelton Distillery fine spirits yeah. are also yeah. available at your local grocery and other retailers around Iowa. Please check them out online at reveltondistillery.com yeah, or visit them at the distillery. If it's time to celebrate or just time to sit back and unwind, well, then it's time for a Revelton moment. This is the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on Des Moines Sports Leader, 1350 ESPN. All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio. We got Larry McCoy from Respect the Game TV on the on the line. We're talking a little turkeys today. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Todd Rupert. Would you call Todd Rupert handsome, Larry? Uh, well, on some days, you know. On some days. We've got that beard trimmed up. He doesn't look mighty fine. Yeah. I was like a red fox. I was sure. I showed everybody on Facebook Live a picture of Todd on the packaging on the, and Todd goes on her handsome, huh? I said, well, thank you, Todd. I appreciate that. Jackie, Jackie yeah, Nicole says, I like that hoodie, Dan. Thank you, Jackie. Rupert, do you hear that? That's another person that would buy one of these if you get multicolors made. <laughs> uh, yeah. Old day going to work on Todd. I'm telling you. Hey, I'm not making it up, Jackie. I said, just I said he looks like a red fox, but he, but he can act like a mean coyote every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah, we love running his calls, that's for sure. But, uh, hey, what do you, um, hang on, I got, what's this in here? Uh, can, can call the one the outdoors dance special. No, he, he won't do any outdoors dance stuff. He wants to sell stuff. So... Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But thanks for asking, though, Aaron. I appreciate that, man. I, I tell you, Donovan, uh, Donovan's Donovan's loaded this year. He's got. Uh, I think that going to one bird's gonna. I mean, we. I don't know. We saw a lot of birds last year. They had a good hatch out there last year, and I think voluntarily going to one bird last year, like we did, and then now the state's mandating, and I really think that's going to help out there. Don't you, Larry? Oh, for sure. I think that the uh, you know everywhere where the turkey population is suffering, I think. Last year was definitely a, a good hatch. I mean, uh, out there the year prior was good. There was a lot of, uh, I mean, we saw a lot of jakes last year. I mean, we had a group of 17 jakes come in uh, on one piece last year, and we were, I was like, man, that's that's definitely a good sign. That's what you want to see because prior to that, I mean, the numbers were just declining so rep, so fast. I mean, everywhere. Here in Missouri, they were, it was, I mean, I mean, it was declining really, really fast. And then, uh, even so, last year I think in Missouri they had a pretty good hatch as well because it was starting to see more and more birds out and about moving around. Uh, you know, so man, the last couple of years, two three years, it'd be you'd be hard pressed to see a bird strutting in the field. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chris, at, and, Chris at Slim uh, Knox County said that they had a really good hatch. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, you know it's coming back. So whatever I think, you know, a lot of it there's a lot of myths and stuff. Of, hey, why everything was you know the turkeys was. The, Oh no, it's Mother Nature. You know, I think it's it's, it's kind of run You know, it takes care of itself. So, uh, I, but I do think uh, implement, implementing the one bird out there and and uh, it's definitely going to help things quite a bit. It's going to build the population back up. Yeah, and, uh, and make and it's our, it's always been a really great re resource. Uh, Kansas, as is I, you know, as is Iowa. You know, Iowa probably got some of the most well thought out seasons out there. Some people like them, some people don't. It, it's tough to get a tag in it, but, but that's why the resource is so good as well. I mean, they do take care of the resource and, and, and you know, make sure that there's quality animals to go pursue and, and uh, you know, keep, you know, that's why you know, it's the land of the giants, they say. Yeah. And Kansas isn't too far behind it. No. I just, uh, Gary, my friend up there where I go walleye fishing and bear hunting just sent me a text. They found a 200 inch buck uh, down about 45 minutes from where we hunt. They're down there moving stands around and doing a little bluegill fishing on the lease down there. And uh -huh. they found a dead 200-incher. Wow. Yeah. They, uh, that's sad. And that's the other thing, too, on the deer side. The EHD is just, uh, you know, right with the drought and stuff down through Missouri and all that. I know there's a lot of people that I've talked to within the industry that they get hit with EHDs, and they're finding a lot of dead bucks that, that disappeared, uh, you know, early season that you know, dies in velvet or whatever. But uh, So, obviously, there was a pretty good EHD. I know south, uh, what, southeast Iowa got hit pretty good. Yeah, southeast uh, Iowa got hammered, yeah. And so, it's just, you know, when it's sporadic, you know, they say it's on that, that uh, latitude line, you know, goes, and I, I believe that because a lot of people up, up uh, kind of in that northern Missouri uh, all the way through uh, Nebraska and stuff like that got hit as well. You well, know, we... The, the we drought was and, yeah, right? we... We found a couple dead deer on in our place. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, it's that, it's kind of out of your control. What I try to do is just keep uh, keep water in there. And it seems like you know down here in Missouri, you know, we we can't put mineral and stuff out, and we you know we we do. I try to you know I'm really focusing on trying to get some water stations and stuff like that, even embedding them to the ground, building them up so 
It doesn't get because the deer. What I what I have noticed is anywhere that I do have mineral down here in Missouri, if it does get water, holds water. I mean, I'll have pictures of every animal on the farm on it. Yeah, and there won't be. And I don't know if the mineral keeps some of those those bugs, uh, you know, away versus that stagnant water or anything that sets. I don't. I'm not 100 sure. I'm not a biologist, but I will tell you that I haven't found any down there on the farm since I started doing that. You know, uh, but. Ben and I were talking about that on the Healthy Herd the other day, putting in those 40-gallon uh, Rubbermaid uh, wa uh, water troughs and yep. then putting pea gravel around them. If you do a yep. couple of those around, um, the, Ben said that really helps your property if you do that. Oh, that, and I could tell you, that the other thing that, that you could do if you don't want to go buy the bins, and what I have done that's worked really well, is they make that hard, like that plastic, you know, fish tank liner. You can buy a landscape store or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like... It's a plastic, but whenever you, uh, you can dig a hole deep enough to where it holds water and line it, line it with that so it doesn't, and what it'll do is help pack, and packs all that bottom and it takes a little bit of time, and then once the water sits in there uh, a while, and just build it up around the edge, that it will hold water, and, and it'll continue to uh, it'll allow you to either put water in it as well, or the rain, if you're getting, a, a, you know, sufficient rain, so it's going to keep it cool. Yeah. Yeah, and that, if you got the gravel and stuff, the midge flies can't put nests and stuff yep. around that mud. Yep, for sure. Yep. Yeah. And and it's a uh, it's a very very effective way to to uh, to try to combat that anyway, and also provide uh, you know for us deer another water source. Yeah. And anymore, I mean they, they do make they make the you know the nutritional value that you can put in the water and stuff like that as well uh, now as well. Yeah. Just make sure you know where they're at so you don't walk in the dark and fall in there one. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be my luck right there. <laughs> yeah, that, that, the one day I decided not to wear my rubber boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be good. All right, buddy, man. Hey, good luck uh, Good luck at Donovan's tomorrow. Tell everybody where they can find Respect the Game. Yeah, you can go to uh, the Respect the Game. Obviously, find it on YouTube. Uh, we've got a lot of new content and stuff coming out. We've got a lot of good plans, uh, cool new plans that's coming up uh, here in the future for, for our YouTube channel. And you can go to Respect the Game on Instagram, Facebook. If anybody has questions about anything with regards to a bow tuning issue, broadhead flight, or just an opinion, or hey, I'm I'm, I'm doing this, we'll, we'll do our best to uh, you know, to get you an answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll see if I can find you one. So, yeah, I sent you a picture of that uh, that deer that they found. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. Let me know how things are going out there. Okay, we'll do. I'll keep posted. All right, tell everybody hi for me, Larry. I'll do. There he goes, everybody. Larry Mack. See you, buddy. Good luck. There goes one fine feller right there. All right, 731 and some change. We'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. If you're an archer, you know how important the feel and performance of a bow is on your ability to send that arrow to where it needs to go. Not all bows are made the same, and that's especially true when it comes to gearhead. Gearhead bows are made in the USA and feature models that are compact, quiet, and lightweight. These bows maneuver extremely well, whether you're in the tree stand or the Maybe I wanted to have a meeting If you're a saddle hunter, gearhead is definitely a bow you need to check out. Gearhead bows are engineered to be ahead of the game on the newest tech available out there. Gearhead shoots for 100% customer satisfaction every day. They are yeah, constantly looking at ways to keep kicker. gearhead bows I think I'm going to go back and do that. I think I'm just going to go in there and take your... I'm going to put your kicker on. Head over to your nearest dealer. Like your tree field is a Okay, I take it back. Yeah, I think I'm going to make an executive decision and do that. Stack the deck on your next hunt with Gearhead. Shop online at gearheadarchery.com. <laughs> or locally at Archery Field and Sports in Altoona. That was fun. <coughs> Better call Smoker. Oh, shoot. Nice to have high definition the only one in the phone book that I know by name. Or no, well, Tactic Ed has been helping hunters do that very thing. Whether it's one of our mm. 5.0 or the 5.0 wide camera, you're going to capture your hunts like never before. Mm. They can help you cover your bow fishing trips with a new Tacticam fish cam that's totally waterproof and ready to record some awesome bow fishing action. All the Tacticam yeah, cameras feature 4K resolution, Wi-Fi compatible, feature yeah, live stream capabilities, be a busy with two and a half hours of record well, time that feature what I, image stabilization. I want, what I want, can I get... Of its my mind the rid of all the, all the work stuff for just a day. So. To capture more angles and shots oh, like just a lot of work stuff. So when you're ready to record, yeah. Did I say the wrong time again? Yeah. Don't forget to take your Tacticam camera. 
a lot in one week. I just took it down. It's not. I'm sorry. It's just so. It's a force of habit, man. Just, yeah. well, you've done your homework, yeah. and now I don't know how to change it. I guess it helps clear One thing me after you've harvested that deer or wild uh, game, where are you going to take it? Well, I have an answer. <laughs> the Milo Locker in Milo, Iowa. The, the Milo Locker has been processing wild earlier. game and general locker yeah. animals for over 15 years. Yeah. Daryl and Angie are the owners, oh, and they yeah. take great pride in the fact that they do everyone's order the way the customer wants it. You can have your deer, moose, elk, or even yeah. bear processed and hand-wrapped cut to your specifications. Oh, if you gosh. like tasty snacks, Daryl does a great job making snack sticks, Ooh, summer wow. sausage, and jerky with all sorts of cheese and spice combinations. They do a ton of deer each year at the you know, Milo Locker, was, and they do each order I, like I it was, was their own. So if you get lucky this year and need a good LG locker, game. try the Milo Locker. Check them out today or just give them a call at 6 There we go. I fixed it. We got the right time now. Thank you, Scotty. Hey, guys, Outdoor Stan here. Do you have a message that you need help getting out, or do you need help promoting your business? If you do, we need to have a chat. The weekends, guys, have to change the clocks. If you haven't, let's talk a little bit about Chase Decals in Ames, Iowa, and what they can do for you. I just got my truck wrapped up at Chase Decals and Ames, yeah, and they did an amazing job. That, that Josh, Bob, and the staff. Oh, it took me to uh, like a minute exactly to figure it out. Not too bad. And they went to work yeah, designing a wrap that block. just pops off yeah. my CR7. So he, now, wherever I go, skin. folks will be talking about the Outdoor Call Radio yeah. Network. Hey, uh, if you need help getting your message out, that, yeah, showing she, people she, what she exactly your business is, does, I want you to pick up the phone and call Josh at 515-292-6466. That's 515-292-6466. Or go it, online to chasedecals.com and start planning your campaign today. Too many projects stacking up at home, and do you need some help? Don't worry. Just call Project Partners Design in Ankeny. Rob and Megan Fair have been helping folks catch up on home projects since 2017. Project Partners Design specialize on refinishing cabinets, mantles, bathroom vanities, or even power washing and staining the deck out back. It's nothing but the best materials on all jobs. For example, on deck projects, they use Rymar Extreme Weather Deck Stain to last a long time in our Iowa weather. Rob and Megan can also help you design your projects with a mood design board, so your vision will always be in focus as your projects get completed. It's a great feature for those folks that like to do one project at a time. So don't feel overwhelmed getting your home looking the way you want it. Just pick up the phone and call 507-382-7050. That's 507-382-7050 or email projectpartnersdesign at gmail.com. Military discounts are available every day. This is Andrew Hagel. Put you on hold. We'll be right with you. The dog just got done chewing on the kitchen cabinets. Pick up the phone and call Project Design Partners in Ankeny or look them up on Facebook and help will be on the way. You're listening to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. All right. Welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. Hope everyone's having a great Saturday all across the good old U.S. of A. Don't forget to keep your thoughts and prayers with the Donnie Herman family at Herman's Fine Jewelers. Really appreciate that this weekend. Let's go to the phones. See what old Smeltzy's up to this morning. Good. What's up, Smeltzy? I'm here. How you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Good. Yeah, is that it? it? Is the right time for me <laughs> that, to be on? That it? The, what? What'd you say? I said, is it the right time for me to be on? Uh, it's 837. Oh, I thought you said, I thought you um, Andrew thought you said it was earlier in the day. Yeah, Dan's been screwing with the clock. And uh, well, the clock said 736, because that's the second time or three weeks I ever looked. I look over there, and I, I'm just forced to have it. I'm used to looking at that bigger show clock, and it's... Uh, so I just changed it to the right time, because I'm sick of being wrong. So. <laughs> uh, he, Andrew, he admitted he was wrong. Yeah. Yes, okay, let's... I'm going to... This is recorded, so we're going to go <laughs> <Yeah>. back. <laughs> What's going on at the car dealership? It's a little windy today. At least it's not cold out. We don't have any snow coming down today, so it's going to be a good day. Did it get the wind pick up? It was nice when we got here this morning. Yeah, it's a little windier now, yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be higher gusts today, so... Huh. Good thing I staked up. The sun is shining. <laughs> yeah. the, palm, the palm trees are out. Well, that's good. There's fresh leaves on them. I mean, it's going to be good. Yeah. Good it, day. What kind of deals you got going on? Nothing. I got no deals. No no incentives? No, I do. No, everything is stayed the same. Cause, uh, they usually do uh, one-month rebates. They're only good for a month, but they did 
Uh, March and April are, com- are the, the same rebates and incentives. So you got up to, on half-ton LTZs in high countries, you got up to $5,000 in rebates. And then um, uh, there's no, no rebates on, like, HDs yet just because there's not enough inventory. But those are the bigger incentives for this month. So, But, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the key ones for everything else. So, Well, that's exciting. Yeah. 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 And then... Um, and that's better. I'm just trying to get excited for turkey season. I'm going to do it this year. I'm convinced. Yeah, get out there. I I got my blind out yesterday, and I'm ready to yeah. go. Yeah, Monday morning, I'll be out there. Field camera is showing you a lot of stuff? Uh, I've seen some birds, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> don't want to tell too many details, right? No, no. no you don't have to give away. I, you're, it's like he doesn't want to give away his secret, I, his secret I just, sauce uh, or uh, yeah, place just, or just, whatnot. Just keep it to <laughs> on a need-to-know basis there. That's right. That's right. But yeah. well, we're your friends here, Dan. You, well, we're, we're on the need to know. Well, you're an employee, and Joe is my buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. I thought we were better than that. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I just gotta gotta wait till that clock situation fixes itself. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm right. good. Yeah, I'm good. So you, uh, anything else going on out there? No, not much at all. No, no tire deals all day. Yeah, no tire deals or nothing. No tire deals. No. Nope. Okay. I told Derek to call me if they had tire deals. Yeah, and I don't know when they typically have those because they typically just send flyers out letting people know about the incentive. So I, I don't. I always have to check with um, Derek to see when those are happening. So. Well, all right. All right. Well, tell them where they can find you, and then uh, as soon as turkey season's over, we're going to do a work sharp deal with Joe. So. Yep. You can get a chance to get you an electric workshop sharpener. So, where can they that find you? Where can they I'll find be you? gone next weekend. I'm off next weekend, but I'll be here today at 1101 <laughs> Southeast or Labor at the Rock. All right, Joe, will get you a free coffee. Go out and say hi to him. All right, guys, you have a great one. Hey, Joe, thank you, buddy. Yep, anytime. Thanks, Joe. Good luck. Yep, hey, send me a picture when you get a turkey. Will do. All right, there he goes, Joe Smeltzer. Everybody, smoking Joe does a great deal out there. All right, 840 and some change. How many breaks we got left? We got one more big break, and then, of course, our finale. Okay. So I got this other turkey call to give away, and I thought uh, I made the last one easy. Should I make this one harder? Well, I don't know. I should give Pete's away. <laughs> oh, no. He has called He has called a number of times. He's done it the right way. Don't, don't take. Don't give this away. Well, I mean... I still don't have donuts. You figured he would have came up here during the break and during brought the us, break and and get brought you us donuts. donuts. Yeah. You know, hey, give us a text. Hey, I'm in the parking lot. Come out and get your donuts. <laughs> now we don't have, we only got 20 minutes left now. We don't have that. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, if you if you can call in, if you haven't won anything in the last 30 days. And we'll check. And we will check on the app or on the station. Uh, you can call in at 244-1350 and tell me what's, what, what's, what, 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 what town is Rupert's Roost and Peace Turkey Calls made in Pennsylvania? What town? You know that? Call Andrew and we'll get you a free over and under with the, one of Larry and I's favorite turkey calls that we use. You'll love this call. This thing is nice. It really is. Ooh, speaking of Tacticam, my reveal just went off. My reveal just went off, and what do I have going on here? I'll tell you. Come on. That was yesterday. Well, we've got a couple deer out there. Little dozies. Oh, they love my camera, man. So that means the turkeys are on the other side. There's the deer just filed on. I love that reveal, man. That's one of the best things that ever happened. I just, my little phone dings, and I get a chance to look at those cameras. 842 and some change. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Uh, it's not a cow. There's no cows out there. 842 and some change. Let me take this last big break. If you know what town Rupert's Roost and Peace turkey calls are made in, is that too hard? That's really not a hard question. Mm, I think you're good. Is that a good? What town? 244-1350. 244-1350. I mean, all you have to do is look up Rupert's Roost and Peace turkey calls. I mean, it tells you right there. I'm pretty sure. If it doesn't, let me know. We'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. It's on the package. Hey, let me ask you a question. Do you like to go fishing or have you ever been back trolling? Back trolling is still one of the best methods of boat control while rigging for walleyes and other fish. 
Wave Whackers yeah. has been the choice for yeah. anglers on knew all that sorts too. of what? boats that help keep weeks and what? water spray off of them. I and knew the location. I was like, oh, man, I'm just being on the water. Well, well you wave know where what state it is. I say it all the time. You want just the state or the town? I want the town. Heavy-duty aluminum frames, extruded rubber for superior protection from unwanted water in your boat. Wave Whackers are custom-made to fit most fishing boats, including tillers or consoles. So when you hit the water next time, don't let the water hit you back. Let Wave Whackers keep you dry and secure. Check them out at wavewhackers.com. That's wavewhackers.com. Or just pick up the phone and give Mike a call. You're going to love your Wave Whackers, and they're going to help keep you dry. You're on point, Jeff. That was it. You nailed it. Got a winner already. When a lot of us are working from home. It's even more That's important great. to make yeah, sure your home my job is the right temperature and, and comfortable. On. Now is a great time That's to call perfect. the experts at Wyckoff Heating and Cooling at 287-6000 to schedule a check on your current heating and cooling systems. The answer is, is Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Family Greensburg. A Honeywell dehumidifier system installed with your AC heating system can solve right that the issue pack. right away. Wyckoff Heating and Cooling is a family-owned and operated business that has been serving Iowa residents and businesses for over 70 years. They offer 24-hour service and programs like the Peace of Mind Plan for less than $15 a month. So if you want more time on the water or in the woods this year, please call the folks at Wyckoff Heating and Cooling for any of your home or business heating and cooling needs. One call to Wyckoff Heating and Cooling will bring you peace of mind under your roof every day. I don't know if they send you a present, but you can always come pick it up. You know where the station is, Jeff? You were hunting, and I a deer did, yeah. just crawled but, onto your uh, leg and is burying its head into your flesh. Monday, you can't feel the bite, and you up. may or may not know. find I the tick. In the coming weeks, you may or may not notice a red ring yeah, around just the bite. Normal Shortly thereafter, yeah. you may or may not get really sick. Your doctor may or may not test you for Lyme disease. The test may or may not detect it, meaning you may or may not get the medication needed. If untreated or not treated on time, you could have a lifetime of complications. <laughs> Don't take that like, chance. Get a limited clothing from Game Hide. Like, a limited play which is insect well, well, he bought some at the deer class. The yeah. Ticks hate it. A limited well, clothing it's will it's retain like, man, its effectiveness, go, effectiveness for the life of the garment and needs no special care. The treatment is odorless and invisible. Yeah, he wants some Marty Guy's at the deer class. It's just been 30 days. And other biting insects. And is featured in a complete line of quality game. For today's the fourth. To learn more, visit yeah. GameHide.com. But he didn't win it. Hey everybody, it's Outdoors Station. Dan. Have you been he one of the few did. that have raised your hands this time? Well, it was at the Deer Class. Thanks for your service. Yeah, at the booth. Everyone at MoVet Outdoors yeah. has been working hard to continue their mission since it started ah, in 2019. Soldier. Right there. MoVet Outdoors is a group Coming of veterans next. that want to support mm -hmm. vets after wow. service by taking them on outdoor activities, providing camaraderie for vets with other vets. In a supportive yeah, environment. At Movet Outdoors, you can go on hunting and fishing trips, survival school, golfing trips, even box. take part at their new archery range. He There's won the over and under turkey call. And other contests for vets to take part in. Over and under. Movet Outdoors is building a new lodge in Lincoln County, Missouri, and has plans for another in the future to support vets in their community. So, if you're a veteran or active duty and would like to join a great group of fellow veterans, look up Movet Outdoors on Facebook. And send them a message. MoVet Outdoors has been working hard with vets every week to continue their great mission. Go check them out. You'll be glad you did. Heading on your next adventure and looking for some snacks to take? Why not pack a snack that tastes great, gives you protein, and is easy to pack? Have you heard of Soldier Boy Beef Jerky? Soldier Boy Jerky is slow smoking. Do we have that in another format? Generous That's tender horrible. morsels that taste outstanding. Yeah, really Soldier Boy Beef Jerky offers the following flavors: Sweet Heat, Original, Maple, or Pepper flavors that will satisfy you all day in the field. Soldier Boy Beef Jerky is veteran-owned and proud supporters of the Canines for Warrior Foundation. They also it, donate yeah. to troops that are deployed serving our country. So next time you're looking for snacks from home or on your next or outdoor like adventure, please remember to reach for some Soldier like Boy that, Beef Jerky. Available at Sports that's not the original Warehouse. Spot. Soldier Boy Beef Jerky. Outstanding no, that's taste that keeps you satisfied in the field. Oh, man, for more information, that's please that's check that's us out that's online that's at www.sbjerky.com. This is the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on Des Moines Sports Leader, 1350 ESPN. 
All right. Trivia was brought to you today by our friends at Obi-Wan Kenobi Central. That's uh, Advanced Family Dentistry over there at 907 North Ankeny Boulevard in Ankeny, Iowa. 515-964-1490 or check them out anytime at AnkenySmiles.com. They're one-stop dental shop. Dr. Scott, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yegi, Dr. Brandt, Dr. Stewart, Dr. Williams, they all do a great job over there providing excellent care for your, all your dental needs for cleanings, cavities, fillings, root canals, crowns, and other dental dentistry care. Make sure you go out there and tell them that the Outdoor Call Radio sent you and tell him thanks for being a Jedi dentist. And here's to, we'll say, may the floss be with you. The floss will be with you. Not even going to argue with you anymore, Obi-Wan. Uh, what a great show you guys. Got to head out to pick up my new bow. Scotty, have a good time. Yeah, congrats on the new bow. Yeah, there you go. Woo-hoo! It's a gearhead. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, congrats uh, to our trivia winner. Uh, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, he knew, he knew it was Greensburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. You know, really quick, our listeners definitely know what's up. Yeah, hey, just some housekeeping stuff uh, coming up. Unknown Files, we're going to be running uh, reruns uh, just to get me through turkey season. Andrew's going to be putting those up. Uh, I think June 19th I'll be back uh, starting live ones again. And the very first show we got coming back, if you are a Bigfoot person, you're going to love the show. I uh, finally got a hold of Dr. Jeff Muldrum. Uh, Jeff, Dr. Jeff, is uh, you can see him on all the Bigfoot shows, the um, Finding Bigfoot. Uh, oh, I can't think. There's so many of them, I can't think. But he's uh, he is an actual prof- uh, professor of anthropology, and uh, I can't remember his other title. Is that Idaho? But he's got some interesting points of view on some of these footprint castings. And uh, you're welcome, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> I, Scott, you didn't really need to tell me that. I, I kind of know what. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you, uh, but thank you, Scotty. Uh, Doctor, Doctor Jeff, I've been trying to get him on the show for over a year, and we finally got a uh, got a hold of him. So June nineteenth, we'll be back live on that, and then uh, we'll go until deer season, then we'll go back into reruns. But that's what's going on. So next weekend uh, will be a worst of because I'll be in Kansas. Uh, doing that and then so Wednesday uh, we'll have Turkey Talk Radio, Buck Talk Radio and the Unknown Files. All three will be on. Andrew will take care of that for you. So there you go. <coughs> How about that? <coughs> yep, it's all, all it will all be set and really fun. Yeah. Just kind of go relive and, some of the good uh, stuff. Buck Talk Radio uh, when we start that again uh, in July or August uh, probably start that in August. Um, we got some big changes coming up for that. So we're going to, you're going to be, you're going to want to listen on Buck Talk Radio for sure. Gearhead's got their big open house today. How about that? That's exciting. I'm going to start out with a DSD Jake Strutter. I've got a feeding hen out and a lay down hen out. That's going to be my decoy spread for Monday morning. And uh, I'll hopefully we'll have that going on, and I'll be done before 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Don't, get, don't forget, your best hunting is between 10 and 2. That's when them toms, if they got hens with them in the morning, you know, they'll, they'll be with those hens. And then right around 9, 30, 10, 10, 30, they'll start peeling off those hens because she's going to want to go nest and start laying eggs. And uh, he's going to be looking for some love. He'll be looking love. for some love. Let and uh, that's a great time. So don't get discouraged. If you, you know, if they're out there in the morning and, and they got, they got their hen with them in the morning, you know, you, it's hard to compete with the real thing sometimes. So, and can you blame them? That's, that's insane. No, that's just reality. That's just the way <laughs> things go. You're my boy, bro. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like Larry. I got a mo I got the motion pair decoys in the truck. Um, if, if they're, if they're, if they're flocked up pretty well and they're not responding you know, motion can be a, a big trigger for them. If they see some movement and stuff, that might be enough to pull them your way. Miss the Spooky Dan Show. Well, that'll be back in June, Rick. But you can still listen to it. We got we got to re- recycle everything. There's two years of shows there for you to listen to, Rick. You'll be fine. Um, they uh, that movement can that mo- that motion mating pair uh, with the lay down hen and the uh, three quarter straight strutting Jake. Yeah, uh, like, and you put that over, and it's got a string that's uh, that's affixed to the tail of the decoy. 
So you, you, you decoy stake that and you put the lay down hand about a, a half a foot in front of him and you just pop that string a few times and it rocks that like it's it's trying to breed that hen. I pulled a lot of toms in with that, not even have to make a call, just hitting that a few times. They see that and they can't take it. So just, you know, just remember to be patient. Monday's the opener. We got a, we got a long season and uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, an interesting year, that's for sure, to start off with an eclipse. I don't th I've never hunted during an eclipse, so this will be something new for me. This, it, I wonder would that put you in the twilight zone kind of thing? Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, as long as I don't have a portal opening up and Bigfoot and UFOs popping out of it. Oh, I, 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 that, I, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I, you know, some of these some of these guests I've had on where they say portals just kind of open up and things, you know. You know, if I start seeing bucks and turkeys in coming in and out of portals, I know that's going to change my uh, the way I approach hunting from now on. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Yeah, kind of crazy. <laughs> Kind of crazy. Never seen a portal. Never seen a Bigfoot. Never seen a predator. So, I saw, I saw a thing on YouTube the other day where they said it was a Bigfoot predator. Huh. I'm not making that up. Jenny told me there's a new movie coming out called uh, Bambi the Vengeance or Van Bambi the Revenge. Or yeah. Have you seen that? About, I, I, a, about I, a deer going out and tracking down hunters and whopping them? I've heard... And I, it's that round of, I don't know, interesting people. I'll just say that for radio edit purposes. Interesting people that decide to take childhood cartoons or movies and make a horror spin on them. Did that with Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> the Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, they did a Winnie the Pooh. They made a horror movie out of Winnie the Pooh. Get where? Why? Yeah. They did not. Look it up. Look. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. W Winnie the Pooh. I know they did the Chucky's uh, Five Days at Chucky's or whatever that, you know. Yeah. Fr Friday at Freddy's. Fr yeah. yeah. It's Chuck E. Cheese ripoff. Yeah. 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 I saw. I mean, yeah. we're, we're going through this round of all this stuff and I go, man, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Are they trying to say, hey, you liked it once when you were a kid. Now you're going to like it as an adult now. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I don't know. I just I just tell you right now, deer are not going to be stalking hunters in real life. So I mean, Hollywood <laughs> needs to get a grip. They, they do. They need to find it's probably other a hunters. bunch of anti hunters got together and just say, "Hey, we're going to show them." You know. <laughs> you know I don't. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think we should turn the tables on them and make, <coughs> you know, for all the vegans out there, you know, that give us trouble for eating deer meat and all that stuff. Maybe we should make a movie called and call it Cabbage: The Revenge. Yeah. The stalking cabbage. He will get you. How dare you tear that vegetable out of the ground away from its roots. Away from its home. Yeah. Take it away from its family. From its home. Yeah. Animal uh, carrots have feelings too. How dare you? Yeah. Yeah. The celery. The stalking celery. <laughs> he will get you. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Radishes. The revenge. <laughs> the revenge of the radish. The revenge of the radish. Well, you had the Killer Tomatoes movie. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like, what, back in the 70s or whatever? Oh, man. I only remember that because my dad made me watch it once. Yeah, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. All right, everybody. We're out of here. It's crazy. Uh, thank you to Dr. Obi-Wan Kenobi Yegi. Thank you to Herman's. God bless your Herman's family. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Respect to Game TV. Thanks for Larry McCoy. Thanks for Jim coming on from the DNR. Jones Brothers Taxidermy, 249-4362, 249-4362. You want to make a memory? Go call the boys at Jones Brothers Taxidermy in Mitchellville. They'll take good care of you. If you need to get a hold of me, my email is at theoutdoorcallradio.com. Can't miss it. Go check that out. Other than that, I will see you in a, about a week and a half. We'll be back not next Saturday, but the Saturday after. Well, we'll be on. It just won't be long. I don't want to go. Do we got to go? Yeah. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Good luck, kids. Stay out, of, stay out there. Send me some pics. And good luck to everybody on Monday. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. It's the right time.